What up, Long Beach? Welcome back to your home for everything local sports. It's JJ. And Mike, and this Long Beach State National Championship video is brought to you by Naples Rib Company, the perfect place to cater your team's next event. One year ago today, Long Beach State men's volleyball reached the top of the mountain. This year, that mountain is a pyramid as Long Beach State tries to go back to back hosting Hawaii in the NCAA National Championship on Saturday. What a way for this historic senior class to go out. TJ DeFalco, the National Player of the Year. Josh Tuaninga, also National Player of the Year. Last year at Long Beach State and Hawaii, the two top teams in the country. They played four times this year. Long Beach State won two matches to Hawaii's one. Long Beach State won eight sets to their seven, but Hawaii up 308 to 297 on points. None of that matters. This one's for the championship. But that's how close this thing is. Once again, we'll say it. The mid is the best volleyball venue in the country at me. But an inauspicious start here for Long Beach State because it seemed like Hawaii was winning all of the scramble points in the first set. Something you and I noticed last year at Pauley Pavilion when Long Beach State took down UCLA. Rainbow Warriors definitely comfortable out of system, and you could tell what they'd been talking about all week, how badly they wanted to be in this match. Long Beach State, on the other hand, looking tight. They took it 25-23, but this home crowd is helping Long Beach State get back to the match. Well, TJ DeFalco was doing most of the heavy lifting, let's be honest. He had a great second set. Long Beach State uh, definitely dialed in from the end line. They had the service advantage with eight aces to three for Hawaii. But more than the ace number, they took Hawaii out of their system pretty consistently from the second set on through the end of the match. To Ininga, DeFalco, Kyle Ensing, really everybody dialed in from the back line. And that ace seemed to get Tuinga going, or moving faster that is, and thus the Long Beach State offense moving faster. And here you can see the quick sets in the middle, Amato, Anderson, and then point of the match. Oh, Superman seat grab on the dig? Are you <laughs> kidding me? And then the perfect roll shot from DeFalco. Those two guys obviously have left quite a legacy everywhere they've been and they were leaving it all over the floor. Outside, by the way, the tailgate and watch party was popping. DJ Mike Gallo on the ones and twos. But Hawaii 5-0 in the third set. Bows go up 5-0, and it was led by big number 19, obviously. Rado Parapunov, 16 kills, one of the best players in the country, but Long Beach State is going to answer with maybe their best set of the season. Yeah, you got to stick them with the pointy end, Mike, and everybody took a turn. First, back-to-back -back kills from Kyle Ensing. He had 13 kills and three digs. He was so critical in their semifinal match from the back line. And then back-to-back -back aces from TJ DeFalco, who really proved himself the best player in the country and one of the best players of his generation, obviously. How about East Ethan Siegfried on the block there and then with the kill from the same spot? Six kills, five digs. Four blocks for Siegfried. That was huge numbers in big spots. He's a Hawaii native. I know this match meant a lot to him. Just listen to this last point, Gage. Long Beach takes it 25-22. You can start to feel it. And yeah, feeling it is something this group has done before. We go to the fourth set. It was inch close. 13 ties. Four lead changes in the fourth set alone. But despite being back and forth, Long Beach just seemed to score the louder points, the more emotional points. You can see Josh Tuaninga not having to move on the sets. That means it was great passing. That means he can set anyone he wants to. And that's a good thing when you got the best setter in the country. DeFalco, we mentioned it was all world, all match. 20 kills on 516 hitting, five digs, three blocks, three aces. By the way, four assists on nine attempts. Long Beach up 19-18 here in the fourth. Tuaninga with the massive ace, just like last year at UCLA in the fourth set. Death, taxes, and Tuaninga aces in the fourth. They're guaranteed, Mike. <laughs> you know there's worse places to put them. A few points later, all good things come to those who are great. Winner, winner, back-to-back -back dinner. It's not leftovers if you don't leave the table. <laughs> and Long Beach State at the head of the NCAA table once again. Can I just say how surreal it is to have this happening in the pyramid? We used to do our homework in here. I went to a basketball camp here the year it opened when I was 10 years old. <laughs> Incredible respect between these two teams. On the other side of the net, go Long Beach State. That is the ultimate sign of respect. Is this the two best men's volleyball team to play in a final? You ask a lot of old men's volleyball heads, and they'd say, yeah, maybe. Hawaii might be the best team to not win a national championship. You had to feel for them it was an incredible match. And in moments like these, you just got to put on something commemorative and find someone to hug. 
an absolute team effort. The players, the boosters, Bruce Double D McRae obviously put a lot of time in, Andy Fee, a big deal for the university to step up and host an event of this magnitude. They didn't know that they would have their team playing in it, but they hoped they would, and it obviously worked out. Yeah, that, that is not something you can put on the calendar. Jane Close Connolly, obviously the president, stepping up big time. The whole city really stepping up big time for this team, and the team answered in kind with just incredible performance. The hardware ready to be handed out again. Just surreal to see that stuff in the mid, man. This is the Walter Pyramid. We're going to cover <laughs> basketball games with like 100 people in the, in the stands. And That's where we do jewels. That's where we do jewels right there. And there's a national championship trophy. I mean, what a final chapter to be written in this award-winning novel by this senior class. Man. Well, and a shout-out especially to the big three who came in together as freshmen four years ago, Tuininga, Ensing, and DeFalco, the best recruiting class in the history of the school, the centerpiece of the best senior class in the history of the school, all players of the year of some level, national champs twice, four trips to the Final Four. <laughs> if a picture says a thousand words, that video clip is worth about a milli. I mean, you can see it on the screen behind him. It's really happening, y'all. This is real life. This is exactly how you would have hoped four years ago with this class coming in. It would have played out, and this is exactly what happened. These guys got to cut down nets in the Poly Pavilion, and now they get to do it in their building. But I guess, does that mean they have to pay for it? <laughs> yeah, they take that out of petty cash. Women's volleyball season just around the corner, guys. They, they got to use these too. But cutting down the net such a cool tradition. Everybody wanted a piece of history. Everybody wanted a piece of this team this season. And they took on all comers and the last one standing. I mean, a lot of change now for this program and this school. They're back-to-back -back champs, man. Everything is going to look a little bit different. But there are big different things coming, like they're going to need a new banner. You're going to have to hang another one up there. A lot, lot of room for sure. You're also going to need a bigger sign. You're going to need... A whole lot of Long Beach State coverage as you find out what's next as we continue this golden era here at the beach. Incredible stuff for the Long Beach State men's volleyball program. Congrats to them and everyone involved from us here at the 562, your home for Long Beach sports.